Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. I'm excited today. It's Champions League, game week number one, Chelsea versus Sevilla in our Champions League group. An opportunity to get probably one of the two hardest games out of the group, over and done with in match week one. I've got some, some weird feelings about this one. You remember last season when uh, Ross Barkley stood up and, uh, well, I think any of us could have probably had a better attempt of scoring a penalty than what he did. Who is it, Barkley? Stamford Bridge at home to Valencia. He blazed it over the bar. Rodrigo scored a winner. Chelsea went into that game with confidence. We walk away with absolutely nothing. But today, I'm going to build my team. I'm going to tell you guys what I think about this game. The evident problems that we kind of addressed in yesterday's video, if you haven't seen it yet, how Chelsea could fix themselves. You should go and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Before we get into any of that, though, I do want to ask you to subscribe to the George Benson Football Channel. I'm back uploading every day now, now that football has returned. The international break took a little break. It was much needed. I feel fresh with lots of energy to bring you guys the hype, to get you excited and hopefully to quash some of the, the, the discontent Discontent? Is that even a word? I, I think it probably is. The The sadness right now at Chelsea Football Club is that we can't flip in seem to win matches. The defensive issues that we had alarmingly throughout the whole of last season seem to have, you know, exacerbated a little bit this year. I don't know why I'm using words I can't say properly here to start this video off. Got some, got some good sleep recently despite Chelsea's performances, but it's a nervy kind of match. Sevilla are a very good side. They finished fourth in La Liga last season, and they're a team that like to attack. They're pretty compact as well at the back, similar to the majority of Chelsea matches, being a very high score in one. I think I'll give my prediction towards the end of the video as to what I think the scoreline could be and focusing on less of the negative stuff that we saw to give that lead away against Southampton. I'm seeing a lot of positives in the Chelsea attack. I think when we go forward, we always look like we're going to score. Kai Havertz and Timo Werner, they're beginning to build momentum now. Werner scored his first two Premier League goals of the weekend. Also clocked an assist for Kai Havertz as well, which is going to build his confidence. The issues at the moment, we all know, we've said about it millions of times here on this channel already this season. Defensively, Chelsea are nothing shy of a shambles at the back. We saw a very solid defensive display against Crystal Palace, and I don't think it's a surprise that that also coincided with a Premier League debut for Thiago Silva, who has had a few extra days now to recover from the jet lag and the stress of flying all the way back from South America. He didn't feature for Chelsea at the weekend, but I think he will in this Champions League match tonight against Sevilla. Thiago Silva's never won the Champions League, but of course he has all of that Champions League experience and pedigree to be a leader in a match like this, where Chelsea are going to have their work out against a very strong Spanish side, but I do feel as though, with that attack, and if we bring Silva back in and hopefully he stabilises that back line, I feel like it's got to a point now where even as Pilaqueta in the press conference yesterday before this game against Sevilla, as Pilaqueta said that it's Chelsea going to have to score three or four goals when we understand how weak we are defensively. I think he said it in much different words to what I've just iterated there, but... I'll put it up on the screen, the quote from Aspi. He's aware, Lampard's aware, that right now, if Chelsea carry on like this defensively this season, we're not going to be challenging for titles, we're not going to be winning trophies, we're going to be in a very sticky situation. It's something that needs to be addressed immediately. And if we start building this team, we have to start with the goalkeeper. Edouard Mendy is still not fully fit, he's not ready for this game against Sevilla. So therefore, in my opinion, there's only one person who can be selected for the goalkeeper's role in this game. And it's Willy Caballero. We saw last season when he came in, he makes good saves. Sometimes he's also susceptible to erratic behaviours as a goalkeeper, which does see him also make mistakes. But the level at the moment that Kepa's playing at, the confidence that he has, and I think it's also the confidence the defenders have in him, which just makes the whole thing crumble before our very eyes as Chelsea fans. So Willy Caballero starts in goal for me. Moving in from the right back position, we start off with Cesar as Pilaqueta. I feel as though it's a big game for a captain like him to come in. He's the one who's done the press conference. He's come out and addressed the issues that Chelsea have defensively, being a defender himself as well. And as the captain, as Pilaqueta takes responsibility. And I think he needs to play this one. And I'm going to see him play alongside Thiago Silva, Kurt Zuma, and Ben Chilwell at left back. 
When I look across this back line, there could be a case that Silva might still not be ready for this game and therefore Tomori starts at left centre-back with Zuma moving over to his preferred right centre-back role. I said it in the build-up to the Palace game that Thiago Silva, he needs to be accommodated the most within this Chelsea team in terms of the right centre-back role has been his preferred position throughout his entire career. So seeing him play in the right centre-back with Zuma on the left-hand side, Despite Zuma's error that's kind of made a lot of Chelsea fans forget how good he's been actually at times this season. He's won more aerial duels as a defender than any other centre-back in the league. So Zuma's mistake, and it was a big one, you know, I've already gone over it on the six things we learned and in yesterday's video. It is a big one and it can't happen again. And I think Zuma will be very well aware of that. And I think playing alongside Thiago Silva... They can all speak French in that back line. Aspie can speak French. I don't know about Willy Caballero. I don't think he can. Maybe he can. I don't know. The geezer's a bit older than me, so maybe he's had a bit of time to learn a little bit of French. Thiago Silva, Zuma, and then Ben Chilwell, who I actually think has been very good. And it's unfortunate, really, that Chelsea's defence as a whole, as a collective, have been so bad that Chilwell's performances at the start of this season have kind of gone under the radar because he's been bracketed within the same kind of conversation of poor defending from virtually everybody else. So that is my Chelsea back line. If you watched my video yesterday, which hopefully by this point I've already shouted it out three times that you have, I said that seeing N'Golo Kante play alongside another central defensive midfielder is the best thing that we could see with Jorginho being my CDM of choice for this one. I've gone with Champions League experience for the majority of my selections within this game. It could easily be Mateo Kovacic, who seems to be a little bit out of favour at the moment from Frank Lampard and the rest of the staff at Chelsea. But Jorginho has actually been putting in some good performances. I really like the link-up that we saw with some of the passes he made towards Timo Werner. It's something we, we did see at times last season when Jorginho was trying to find Tammy Abraham over the top. But Timo Werner, the way that he plays, the runs that he makes behind the lines of the defenders, is one of the key parts of his game. And I think Jorginho has that in his locker and we could see it used to great effect against a very good severe side. So, Kante alongside Jorginho, and then we move into a front four. If you remember in yesterday's video again, I keep quoting myself, but I mentioned that despite all of the attacking quality that Chelsea have within this team, I think it's time that we stop trying to accommodate as many of those attack-minded players as we currently are, because it leaves a massive imbalance within the team. So, for this one, there is a player who does like to attack and get forward, who I've had to miss out, and I start with the right wing position. I was thinking about this, and I've gone with this selection based off of Frank Lampard needs to play players in their preferred positions. It could be Callum Hudson-Odoi, but I think after we saw Ziyech come off the bench, and it was a very frustrating debut, we've seen what he can do in the Champions League, and I think it would be a perfect opportunity on a Tuesday night, we've got Man United on Saturday, so we've got a few days to recover. And I think Ziyech is ready, so therefore Hakim Ziyech, for me, starts on the right wing. Again, I think we could see those crosses coming in. We can see Aspilicueta trying to get forward, linking up with Ziyech. There's so much potential within this Chelsea team. And when I look at the team that I've built, I, I don't see how... We, if we can just sort these flipping defensive issues out, we're going to have a seriously good team. People need to be patient. But at the same time, there's no such thing as patience in football. When you keep giving away goals, keep giving away points, Chelsea cannot afford to do that in this one. Ziyech starts on the right wing. And in the middle, it's Kai Havertz. I've been incredibly impressed with Havertz. He did make mistakes in that game against Southampton. I gave him a yellow box, as you can see on the screen in the six things we learnt video, because some of his errors were costly for Chelsea in the overall ending of the game. Havertz has been brilliant going forward though. I think a lot of what I've seen from Havertz so far this season, a lot of people have compared him to Meza Ozil, saying that he gets a little bit lazy. I wouldn't necessarily agree with this. I think Hazard, 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 oh no. I've just done it again. Havertz's work rate, I actually think is very good. Sometimes he does look a little bit lackluster with a running back, which is something the entire Chelsea midfield we're very poor at in this game against Southampton, but I think we will improve. Havertz starts in the central attacking midfield. Moving on to the left wing, finally playing in his preferred position, Christian 
Pulisic. This man is a match winner. This man is world class. He's ready to take the mantle, to make this position his own. I hope that Frank Lampard continues to play Pulisic in his preferred role. We've seen him on the left wing and I think we could see some beautiful interchange in play. If Ziyech can ghost inside, Pulisic can ghost inside coming in. Habits, Werner maybe moving out wide at times, but he is the striker and I've put Timo Werner as the striker for this one. With these four players in the attacking positions, team opposition defences, Sevilla's defence, Sevilla's midfield, they like to often play holding midfielders. Sevilla are going to have their work out against these. If Chelsea can get things ticking, if we can make those early passes to make those runs for Timo Werner over the top, Kai Havertz with the link up as well, Chelsea could dominate any game. When I look at the way we line up, it's up to Frank Lampard now to come up with new tactics, to come up with new little ideas as to how we can utilise these attacking creative players to the best of their abilities and the way that they complement one another. I mentioned on Twitter yesterday that people are currently very narrow-minded about what's wrong at Chelsea. People love to just throw the blame on Frank Lampard because Maurizio Pochettino's out of a job and they like the idea of that over Frank. But what we need to remember as Chelsea fans is that we're going in now to a new era. We've been through all of this time of sacking managers and then seeing success. It has been successful for Chelsea. But the Roman Abramovich project wasn't always just about winning trophies. It was about building an ethos of the club. It was about building an academy where Chelsea fans and Chelsea Football Club get to see players that have grown up playing in the younger years at Chelsea, coming into the first team. Last season was the introduction of that. We saw a breakthrough for many players and now, those players that broke through last season, we've added 200 plus millions worth of talent to that team. And I think anybody who thinks it's immediately going to be perfect and we're going to sit here talking about three, four, five, six nil wins every single game, that's incredibly naive. A word that I find quite funny in football, but it is stupid to think that Chelsea were going to be perfect just because we've gone out and spent a load of money. There's a lot of work to be done. Defensively, we need to find new ways to be able to create chances for 90 minutes and not just one half of the game. That is also key for Chelsea right now because if we don't fix the defence, we're going to have to score four or five in order to win football matches. And we've got the ability to do that. I just hope it isn't always like that because my heart will start racing. My other organs in my body might start shutting down. And I don't know if I can cope, if I'm quite honest with you, but there we go. That is my team. The subs are also on the bench as well. Great quality on the bench, as always, from Chelsea. Players that can come on, change the game. Let me know the starting eleven that you think is going to play for this match at home to Sevilla in the comments down below. I don't want to focus too much on the opposition. I think it's very hard right now with Corona and the way that football is to really focus too much on form, to focus too much on quality. But we know Sevilla are a very good side. Yes, they're a lot better in the Europa League and the Champions League's not really been their forte, but it's going to be tough. It's definitely the toughest team alongside Chelsea in this group. We get off to three points tonight. We can build upon that, gather some momentum going into Manchester United away at the weekend. But thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit the like button and see how many likes we can get before the kickoff tonight. See if we can go for 5,000. That's a big ask, but I'm sure you guys can do it. Let me know your team in the comments down below. Who are you fearful of within this severe side? Come on, you blues. Let's aim for three points. And I might do a live stream. Follow me on Twitter to check that out if I do decide to do so. It's all dependent on the internet. It's a little bit hit and miss here on this island. But anyway, catch you guys later. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.